very few rock musicians have been as controversial as Frank Zappa. Even the name he's given his children have raised a few eyebrows. But there is no controversy about his talent or about his role as a rock and roll innovator. <laughs> Boulevard and right behind me is the first house that Zappa would reside in in Laurel Canyon. This house burnt down long after Zappa moved out. It burnt down in 1980. So right now what we look at is pretty much an empty lot. Now Zappa would move into this house in May 1968 fresh off of his two successful albums with Mothers of Invention. Freak out and absolutely free. He would move here with his wife, Gail, and his daughter, Moon Unit. Now, it was shortly after Zappa moved here that this place became a crash pad for many people. Ended up being 11 people living here, including Zappa, his wife, and his daughter, including some of the band members from Mothers of Invention. He also had his personal assistant living here, and he also had uh, a nanny for his daughter, Moon Union. Shortly after Frank Zappa and his family settled in here, it became sort of known as a party place. It was a place for the who's who in the music industry, and people would basically just walk into unlocked doors and kind of just hang out until they see Zappa and have conversations with him. Now, his personal assistant would say that Zappa at the beginning was really fond of this. He really enjoyed their company. And he liked the fact that a lot of these musicians were coming over to his house, you know, having little jam sessions and conversations. Now the musicians that would show up at his house oftentimes were people like Mick Jagger, uh, Marianne Faithful, David Crosby, Eric Clapton, Peter Tork, Rod Stewart, Jeff Beck, and there's a famous story of Rod Stewart and Jeff Beck actually having a food fight in the kitchen, totally destroying Zappa's kitchen. And there's another famous story of Mick Jagger and Captain Beefheart actually jamming out together. Now that is something I would have loved to been a fly in the wall to see that. Now, if you don't know who Captain Beefheart is, he's a whole nother video that I would like to do in the future. But he was one of Frank Zappa's good friends. Zappa had a lot of plans for this house. It had a lot of potential. It was kind of a rundown house when he moved into it. But it had a lot of, like I said, a lot of potential. And he wanted to put a uh, recording studio down in the basement of the house. And he wanted to fix the whole house up to look amazing. Now, now this wasn't a house that he bought. He was actually renting it for $700 a month. Now I wish something in Laurel Canyon these days were $700 a month. Unfortunately, we're not there anymore. Now at this point, I have to say that Frank Zappa was a workaholic. He wasn't about alcohol. He wasn't about drugs. He didn't even partake in any of that. His drug was making music. He did, however, smoke like a freight train and he drank a lot of coffee. The novelty of all these stars coming over unannounced to Frank Zappa's house has worn off at this point. Zappa has reached his boiling point. Uh, he was tired of the, all the unannounced visits and all the partying that would take place at this house. And that's when he decided to buy another house right here in Laurel Canyon. And we're gonna go over there next. Let's go check it out. But before we go, if you wanted to ever come by and check out this house, it's on Lookout Mountain and Laurel Canyon Boulevard. I also want to say right across the street from where Zappa used to live for the four months, is the Harry Houdini estate. Still in Laurel Canyon, a four minute windy drive, you get Zappa's second house. 
Zappa would move into this house in August of 1968. The house is 800 square feet, seven bedrooms, six bathrooms, two guest cottages, swimming pool, and a rooftop tennis court. Now Zappa bought this house and it was only an unbelievable $75,000 to purchase this house. So this is where Zappa built his famous recording studio, Utility Muffin Research Kitchen. I don't know, Zappa for you. Now obviously Zappa wasn't a big fan of the big studios and the whole music industry as a whole. And this was just much more of a perfect environment for Zappa himself. In this house as well is where he had what was known as his vault. Now what his vault was for was storing thousands and thousands of uh, recordings of his music. Not only that, but this is also where he would store his family movies and, and photographs and just all kinds of just different memories that meant something very special to him. Now Zappa would live in this house from August 1968 to the time of his death, December 4th, 1993. Now after Zappa passed away, his family members still lived here, and his wife Gail lived here until her time of death. Now Gail Zappa passed away on October 7th, 2015, and shortly after she passed away, this house would go on the market. In 2016, Lady Gaga purchased this house. It's also a pretty known fact that Lady Gaga used the Utility Muffin Research Kitchen to record her sixth album. On November 2nd, 2022, Lady Gaga sold her house to Liz Jagger, Mick Jagger's daughter. And I believe she currently resides at this house right now. Now, unfortunately, we can't see the whole house. This is pretty much the only part we can look at, but man, this is amazing. And if you wanted to check out the home for yourself, it's on 7885 Woodrow Wilson Drive. Uh, we're not done yet. Let's go check out Rizappa had their first concert in Los Angeles County. Let's go. September 27, 1966, the Mothers of Invention would play their first Los Angeles gig right here at the Whiskey A Go Go. Now Frank Zappa wasn't a huge fan of the hippie movement. He would oftentimes satirize the whole thing. Uh, but the hippie movement also came out of San Francisco. So it was kind of an interesting thing that he played at the Fillmore and really got his start there. What, what has it done to him? It's taken away a lot of their ambition. I think we have yet to reap the so-called benefits of the acid generation as the burnouts begin to turn up more frequently. This would be the time that I would talk about Frank Zappa's thoughts on drugs. Now, even though he didn't partake in drugs, Frank Zappa was very much into not legalizing, but decriminalizing all drugs. That was a pretty harsh stance that he would take. Uh, his political beliefs were just very much on the left of the political spectrum. Now, the Whiskey A Go Go here in West Hollywood was the very first venue that the Mothers of Invention would play at. But now we need to go to the very last venue the Zappa would play at here in Los Angeles County. Let's go. This is where Zappa would play his last LA County concert, right here in 1991. Now Schoenberg Hall is one of the halls on UCLA campus. Now at this concert, he would perform many different genres, from jazz, to classical, to rock music, just about anything under the sun. And that was pretty much what his whole tour, his whole last tour of touring the world was like. So the concert that he went on 
There was no mothers of invention. There was no other side project. It was just simply Frank Zappa and of course whoever accompanied him during the concerts. In 1990, Zappa was diagnosed with prostate cancer. His doctors recommended that he get treatment, but Zappa didn't want treatment. He didn't want to continue going to the doctor and fighting this cancer. So what he did instead is went on to do the things that he loved for the rest of his life, and that is touring the world. Now this is the very stage that Frank Zappa played on uh, in 1991. Pretty cool. Zappa would spend the rest of his years touring the world, just like he loved to do. By time December 4th, 1993 rolled around, Zappa passes away. He was 52. Now I'm at Pierce Brothers Cemetery and Memorial Park. And here it's very star studded. You have tons of different stars that have been buried here, along with Marilyn Monroe. Now even though Frank Zappa is buried here, um, he doesn't have a headstone, so he's a little difficult to find. In fact, there was some misinformation for a very long time that he was buried right over here. Let's go look at this real quick. Now it was said that Frank Zappa was buried right by Lou Eris. Uh, Lou Eris is also an actor um, very far back. He goes very far back. Uh, 1908 to 1996 is when he passed away. Actually passed away after Frank Zappa. But a lot of people thought that Frank Zappa was buried right here. Now as you can see that there is another uh, headstone here. That it clearly is not Zappa's headstone. Now because Frank Zappa doesn't have a headstone, uh, he was born on December 21st, 1940, and then passed away, like I said, on December 4th. 1993. Now I do feel like this is Frank Zappa being Frank Zappa. Not having a headstone is very much something he would do. It's very much within his personality. Um, however, it is still a little hard to figure out exactly where his gravesite is. But according to Google Map, it is right here, right behind me, where the pavement meets the grass. But I have a whole video on that and uh, I'll show it at the end here. But what I want to talk about here is that Frank Zappa, um, the time he passed away, he had 62 albums. And I just want to say to anybody that may be watching and curious about who Frank Zappa is, and maybe curious of where to start within this, this large discography that he has, <laughs> that's a hard word to say, uh, I would personally, personal reference uh, for me, is absolutely free came out in um, 1967 it was the second album with mothers of invention and another mothers of invention album that i personally really like if you're a weirdo like me is uh weasels weasels rip my flesh what i highly love about that album it is just so uh centric it's so bizarre and I don't know, I've always loved bizarre things. Reason why I'm a big fan of uh, Captain Beefheart as well. And uh, it's also why I love Zappa's other side project. I don't know if it's a side project, but it's uh, um, Wild Man Fisher. Uh, I love crazy stuff like that. So um, if you are a weirdo like me, please go check out Weasels Rip My Flesh. Now ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you enjoyed this video, I plan on doing more stuff about Zappa in the future. He has a huge life to cover. Um, this is just kind of touching the tip of the iceberg, showing you where he lived and stuff like that. I'd like to do more Zappa videos, but for now, if you'd like to see more Zappa videos from me, I show you where he's, his gravesite is. Uh, go check out that video. I'll see you guys over there and uh, take care. All right, guys, bye.